ready. Opening day, Nebraska rifle season. Uh, it's aggressive style of hunting that we like to do out here. We like to, to move a lot. It's whitetail hunting with a twist in Nebraska for host Mike Handbeck on this episode of Winchester Whitetail Revolution. There you go. There you go. Winchester's Whitetail Revolution is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Otis Technology, the most advanced gun care system in the world. Code Blue, perfecting the science of hunting. Winchester Rifles and Shotguns, the guns that work. Bushnell Optics, magnify life. Host Mike Hanbeck has come to Nebraska for deer season, and he's arrived at prime time, the ruts in full swing. And if the sight of big whitetail bucks weren't distracting enough, among the cedars and in the brakes, there are rutting mule deer as well. Oh yeah, look at them horns. That is awesome. Oh. He was staring him down. Oh man, look at the horns. Look at that, oh, oh, oh man. Handbeck and Table Mountain Outfitters owner and guide Scott Denny are hunting in the heart of the heartland in west central Nebraska, where whitetail and mule deer mix. Table Mountain Outfitters is based out of Wyoming. We also hunt Idaho, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Nebraska, we hunt whitetail deer, mule deer, and turkeys. I'd hunted with Scott and Angie Denny at Table Mountain Outfitters once before over in Wyoming, and they had some great, fabulous deer hunting over there. So when I got this opportunity to come experience what they had in Nebraska, I jumped at it because they're great people. And they got a great outfit, great guys, good country. You know, the, the country here is very diverse. We've got you know, cedar canyons, we've got alfalfa fields, cornfields, river bottoms. Uh, it, it's it's neat country. It's uh, it's different than our Wyoming hunting. The mule deer and whitetail can be found at any spot. It's uh, it's aggressive style of hunting that we like to do out here. We like to, to move a lot and uh, see if we can you know, find them bedded down or in a field coming across where we can get in front of them. Kind of, you know, it's just afternoon. And we're probably not going to see a whole heck of a lot, but it's a good, good vantage. It's pretty view. So, I mean, there's, there's you know, it's rut. We could see a nice buck chasing a, a doe at sheet of 150. You, you, never, you, know. you never know. <laughs> we're not going to do it drinking coffee no. back at camp, no. though. That was a sweet deer. Immortal words of Beatle John Lennon, life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. For the buck of a lifetime, the only plan should be to get out there and hunt for it. 
A big buck may not be stupid, but he doesn't come in out of the rain either. And the hunter who wants to find him can't let the weather stop him from making his appointed rounds, just like the mailman. Heavy rain and fog on Pennsylvania's rifle opener last year kept a lot of guys home, but not Adam Freeburg. He used those damp, quiet conditions to full advantage. Adam slipped around a ridge, skirted a thicket, froze when he spotted a big rack in the brush. He saw four points on the left beam, all he needed. The buck was legal for that man's been unit. He fired a perfect shot with his 30-odd six, and the huge buck crashed down only 30 yards away. Lesson learned, rainy days are best for still hunting. You can walk on the wet leaves and sneak right up on big bucks like we love to do right here on Winchester's Whitetail Revolution. Adam's great 10 pointer is proof of another thing. Pennsylvania's controversial antler point restriction is growing some massive bucks in the Keystone State. For more great big buck action, check us out on the web at versuscountry.com. Seeing the mule deer rutting is a great omen for Hanbeck because it means that the whitetail are in the same frame of mind too. We need, we need to go over there. We need to get over there. A really good sign for me was right that first afternoon we saw a big mule deer buck. Nice, not very wide at all, maybe 15 inches wide, but nice tall, deep forks coming in, almost bred a doe right there in front of us about 80 yards. So that was exciting. And then we know the rut's on for the muleys, the rut's on for the whitetails. Anything could happen. It comes to be across that same clearing where we saw the buck. Let's go over and walk down this ridge. That was a sweet deer. What do you go right in that little patch right there? Yeah, that's where you were. Right up in there, yeah. We're close. I'm damn we're close. Getting closer. There's three big shooters right here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it would be a million dollar question. Do we wait? Or do we? <coughs> Let's see if we can find them. Well, we went out this morning in the same country where you've seen a lot of a lot of good bucks and a lot of smaller bucks, and it was really pretty slow. And But we, we kind of got in there with them, got more aggressive on the ground and started stalking around, and we, we snuck around down at the bottom of a canyon, and boom, out pops a doe. Big one's gonna pop through there, too. Big one's gonna come through there. Oh, that's cool. Every time you see a white-tailed doe on this trip, get ready, because there's probably going to be a buck behind her. And sure enough, there he was. And he came out and he kind of dogged a little bit. We got down as far as we could, trying to make it happen. The buck sort of busted us and took off a little bit, and finally got away from us and hopped the fence, and that was gone. But again, close encounter, get your heart pumping, ready for more action in the afternoon. You know, put that time to use. You're not going to kill deer back at camp. You're not going to kill deer at home. You're going to kill one when you're out there trying to make it happen. Host Mike Hanbeck's hunt in central Nebraska has given him tantalizing looks at big whitetail bucks. But this is also where whitetail and mule deer range overlap, and Hanbeck's license is an either or proposition. So it could be a fielder's choice if a large enough mule deer puts in an appearance. Next morning we go out, we're in whitetail country. We start spotting whitetail bucks out, three different shooter bucks, all of them dogging a doe. Again, boom, big time rut. You know what you're gonna see? A good whitetail buck. Oh yeah, look at them horns. That is awesome. Oh. Staring him down. Oh man, look at the horn. Look at that. That's oh, a 145, 150 whitetail. Now we're gonna kill him. Is he on you? Yeah, he's on us. He's on us. What a warning that when you get three or four bucks coming in, take a look and come in. Yeah. So we rush for it. On the ground with 100 yards. Yeah, 
that's awesome. See, I think they're bedded just, you know, a bunch of them are bedded in these cedars right here. You know, at least those little ones are, and then that big one was bedded right there. So, well, there's a good chance they may be coming out to that corn right mm -hmm. there, or going to that one. That's that, a little further yeah. corn. Mm -hmm. You'd think they're, you know, the bills are going to hit these ones if indeed they're here like we think they are. I'm going to see a good buck in here tonight. Yeah. Another three or four fours. I guess I could move just getting right up in here with them. Yep. Yeah. Right with the toes right at the bottom. Yeah. You know, with wet rut going on, the whole pattern thing just goes out the door. You know, you're not going to pattern a white tail or a mule deer this time of year. You need to be mobile. You need to move a bit. You do a lot of glassing. Um, and, and once you find them, then make good moves. We're running out of time. Running out of time. You know, we had. Had to change it up a little bit, and uh, just stopped at the right moment with the pickup. Got out, did some glassing, and boom! Nice buck laying down. That's a big deer. That's a good mule buck. Or at least a four by four. What do we got two we hours. Got two hours left. Oh, big white tails. We've been seeing a big white tails. Got a lot of encounters. We've encounters with mule deer. We've had encounters with with white tail and. Any buck is legal on my tag, so. Oh, exactly. I mean, what the hell do you do? That's a big deer. He's a great deer. I mean, we've had our, our chances at the white tail. We got a great chance at a great mule deer, right? Let's go get a closer look. Yeah, I think we better get a good look at him. I think we need a good okay. look. Let's do it. Let's do it. Where's he at, Scott? He's going to be just off this point right here. The ridge? Yeah. 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 You never know how many deer are sitting there. No, that's right. And we're running out of time before we blow this one. We gotta go. We, we, need, we need to have some time to get on another stop. Down to the last minute. Uh, we're not gonna have a lot of time because they're gonna they're gonna see us. Time's running out on Hanbeck's hunt, and here is one of the best mule deer he's ever seen. They call it whitetail revolution, but what would you do? Winchester's whitetail revolution is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Otis Technology, the most advanced gun care system in the world. Code Blue, perfecting the science of hunting. Winchester rifles and shotguns, the guns that work. Bushnell Optics, magnify life. Modern technology in hunting can raise ethical questions and serious debate. Case in point, the ATV. I'm sorry guys, but hunting out of an ATV is a curse. I, I know there are plenty of people who have ATVs and there's nothing wrong with them. An ATV is a tool just like a pickup truck, except for you get rained on. The downside of the ATV is when people try to take advantage of the resource by using an ATV to get to it or to chase it. I'd like to talk to Mr. Fulmer in about another five, six years when he's been around a little bit longer. You know, as our hunting public grows older, the last thing we want to do is to keep them out of the field. And in some instances, that's one of the best way to get folks out in the field. Most of the time, the guy on the ATV is cruising all around the country and spooking the game kicking everybody else off in the woods. There's some people I think that really take ATVs maybe a little bit too far. I'm one of those that hate to admit it, I kind of agree with you to a point. It's great to get to the point, but there's some people to say that just let's do totally away with ATVs and hunting. I think that's the wrong approach to take. We need to get more people out in the field. You just do not do motorized hunting. I don't care what the motor's attached to, your butt shouldn't be on it when you're hunting. 
use it to get to the woods, and then shut that thing off, and wait till you need to haul your game out with it. That's what they're to be used for. We need to have more hunters, and if that's the case, if that gets them into the field, simply because they're feed freaks or ATV freaks, but they still like to hunt, more power to them. It's a tool to use after the hunt, not during the hunt. But let's revisit this subject in about 10 years, Ron, and we'll see if you feel any differently. Something tells me you just might. To ATV or not to ATV, log on at hyperlink www.versuscountry.com and tell us where you stand. Out here in the heart of Nebraska, as his hunt's ending, host Mike Hanbeck has a decision to make. He's been seeing some fine whitetail bucks, but hasn't gotten a shot. This is also great mule deer country, even though it's at the eastern fringe of their native range. With the smaller whitetail bucks around and the big ones not cooperating, is it time for Hanbeck to consider the possibility of filling his tag with a very good mule deer? So, you know, we run back to camp, we get a quick lunch, you know, we've got like three hours left to hunt the whole trip. So we go out and Scott's taking us, and we're gonna go to a new spot. We, we've been hunting the same ground for two days, we're going to a new spot, we're gonna check a couple of canyons. So he takes us up and what was really uncanny was the way he knows the country. You know, he said, let's just stop here on this bend right here and glass down this canyon on each side. So he took one side and I took the other and we're just glassing down in there. And I said, boom, I think that looks like a deer, a bedded deer, a big deer. And I uh, focused on it. I got Scott. We came over, and it's a nice muley bedded right in, the, right in the bottom. And right off, he said, "You know, that is a hell of a mule deer for this country, this far east in Nebraska. That's just not uh, a last-minute deer. That's a first-day deer for a mule deer hunter, and a big animal for here. You know." It's a big deer. It's a good mule deer buck. He, he, he's a great deer. I mean, we've had our, our chances at the white tail. We got a great chance at a great meal there, right? Let's go get a closer look. Yeah, I think we better get a good look at him. Gotta be just off this point right here. Open bridge. Yeah. Yeah. You never know how many deer are sitting no, there. No, that's right. We're not gonna have a lot of time because yeah. they're, they're gonna see us. He's hit good, he's hit good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Awesome, baby. Nice. Great job, buddy. What a mule deer. Yeah. <sighs> well, he's still That is a steep shot, man. That's, that is, I mean, we're not 100 yards from there. I no, think you but... would, I guarantee you can be there in one step. Just a nice, clean stock, good shot. Uh, it was awesome. It was a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. Should be right around this yeah. corner, isn't he, Scott? Yeah. Yeah, he's right where we oh, left him. Man, look at that buck. <laughs> wow. A lot of horn sticking up there. That is awesome. Look at that. Yeah. Look how symmetrical he is. Man. Real light horn. He's heavier than I thought, too. Yeah. Definitely. Really. Oh, darn. Look at the forks man. on him. Look at the <laughs> forks. Wow, yeah. what a buck. Man. One thing I'll never do is pass up a buck like this. That is a great, great deer. Oh man, look at the bases on him too. Great, He's just heavy. Great bases, got a little brow tines. Just a just a fantastic mule deer on its most almost almost the most eastern range of the mule deer. That was really incredible hunt for that mule deer. We we got up there and we're sneaking up, you know, and he's bedded down and we're thinking. You know, we might have to get him up, but all of a sudden, a bunch of does busted out of the brush, and, and obviously when that happens, we know the buck's gonna be up. So we pushed it up a little bit, and Scott said, there he is, and I got on him down there. And I mean, this was a really steep angle. Awesome hunt, a surprise ending, a Winchester <laughs> whitetail revolution with a beautiful mule deer. Thank you, Scott. Congratulations. Awesome job, buddy, thank you. 
We hope to have you back again sometime. We'll come back and chase big white tails or big muleys again. Yeah. We'll see. You bet. Good job. Love to have you.